to the motherfucking relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Okay, we'll start with this. Former unified super featherweight champion, Michaela Mayer, Mayer. stated Mayer. on his social media, I don't support Ryan Garcia cheating at all. But be consistent. Your team just took on someone who popped hotter than a 200-pound bodybuilder. By team, she means Team Haney. And by the 200-pound bodybuilder and someone who popped hotter than one, she's talking about Alicia. Alicia Boom Gartner, otherwise known as Boom Boom. The Michaela. Michaela, who said, I wish Devin Haney showed the same hate to his new druggy stablemate, Boom Boom, as he does Garcia. Seems like she's spending more time on this than lambasting Ryan for testing positive. Does it bother you or not? Devin Haney responded by saying, LOL, you show that same to Garcia? What? It's what I just said. It seems that Michaela's only real interest in the subject is how Devin Haney reacts to this, how he reacts to Ryan's positive test as opposed to how he reacted to Alicia's. That Michaela's only interest here is pointing out a double standard. Is that what this is? Michaela, who responded to Devin by saying, you're missing the point. And I see what the point is. I see it. That Devin's not keeping the same energy for Ryan that he keeps for his stablemate, Alicia. That you're okay. If you're okay working alongside someone who's tested positive for a banned substance, if you're giving them that consideration, why aren't you giving Ryan that consideration? And it's obvious why. Why? It's because he didn't fight Alicia. He didn't share the ring with her. He doesn't have a loss in the column as a result of anything she did. So why would he keep the same energy? Is it hypocritical? Perhaps. Perhaps it is. But who isn't in this industry? In this industry, you can spit in the wind and hit a double standard. You can spit in the wind and hit a hypocrite. Michaela's a bit of a hypocrite. How so? Michaela had a really tough fight with Maiva Hamadouche. Tough enough and close enough that some people thought Maiva should have won. Afterwards, Michaela didn't give Maiva a rematch, but she sure asked for one when she lost to Alicia. It's really not the same thing, though. Nobody tested positive for banned substances in that situation. Well, banned substances weren't the focus. Hypocrisy was kind of like how Michaela is calling Devin a hypocrite, that it's hypocritical to attack Ryan for his positive drug test when you're working alongside someone that had a positive drug test. That's the focus, the hypocrisy. Though be that as it may, I do not expect Devin to keep the same energy for Ryan, who he actually fought, that he keeps for Alicia, who he didn't fight. Common sense. And being able to read between the lines. The old saying goes, Intelligence is knowing that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom is knowing not to put it in a fruit salad. What? Devin's not going to have the same energy for Alicia that he has for Ryan because Alicia didn't do anything to Devin. Ryan did. Is that slightly hypocritical? Maybe. But that's how most people are. Most people are nowhere near as altruistic as they make themselves out to be. Interesting that... After moving up in weight several divisions, Michaela Mayer still has Alicia Baumgartner on her mind. Alicia still reigns as the Super Featherweight Division's undisputed champion, whereas Michaela is three or four divisions north up there at welterweight. They gotta have a rematch. That's how I see it. There has to be a second fight between Alicia, between Michaela, perhaps not right away, but down the line, they've got to run it back. They've got to do it again because Michaela still has an ax to grind because she still has a profile. How? There's too much weight between them. It's not impossible. Natasha Jonas used to compete at 130 and she eventually moved up to 154. The same applies to Terry Harper. Michaela May used to compete at 130. Now she's up there at 147. So one day, perhaps not today, but maybe tomorrow, Alicia will move up and wait. Maybe she'll join her up there. There's enough there that I would like to see a rematch. Michaela clearly still wants one. If she is still taking shots at Alicia Bumpgartner, what's it been? Two years? Two years later? Still taking shots. I don't expect Michaela Mayer to have very many nice things to say about Alicia any more than I expect Evan Haney to have very many nice things to say about Ryan. Common sense. Men's welterweight news. The latest from Matchroom Empresario Eddie Hearn, who says, Wow, we completely sold out the pre sale for Jaron Ennis's homecoming. Over 4,000 gone already. And general sale doesn't begin till midday tomorrow, which is today, as this was posted yesterday. Huge night coming to Philadelphia on July 13th. See you tomorrow at the press conference. The press conference for Ennis 
versus Crowley, what will be Jaron Ennis' first defense as the newly crowned IBF welterweight champion. My thoughts. This is what I call the grassroots approach. Yes. Developing a following for a fighter locally before venturing outward, outward into the world. I mean, it's not dissimilar from what you see with Fabio Wortley in Ipswich or Josh Warrington in Leeds, Lee Wood in Nottingham. Johnny Fisher and all the fans that follow him around from city to city, fight to fight. In the United Kingdom, Eddie Hearn is using that approach here in the United States with Jaron Boots Ennis, bringing him back to his native Philadelphia. You ask yourself, why didn't they do this for Boots at Showtime? It seems sensible enough and sensical enough that you bring the fighter back to where he came from to develop a following there before trying to make it on the world stage. Why didn't this happen already? Why? Because it takes money to make money. Because it takes an investment. You have to be able to roll the dice, and to roll the dice, you have to have the money to play. Showtime and the PBC were experiencing money woes longer than people realize, and I highlighted that many times here on the channel, that a big part of the reason you started seeing so many pay-per-views on Showtime where Boots was fighting was because their annual budget to do fights was shrinking year by year. Yeah, but Boots was never actually signed to the PBC. He wasn't, but he was fighting on PBC shows. If you've seen Jaron Ennis fight in the last five years, it was likely under the PBC banner. Whether he was with the PBC or not, he may as well have been. Back to the point. Why didn't Showtime do for Boots what Eddie Hearn is doing for him now, they didn't have the money to play. They didn't have the money to invest. Year by year, their annual budget was shrinking. And the red flag was the number of fights they were putting on pay-per-view. They were putting so many fights on pay-per-view. That was the giveaway. Fights that didn't belong there. The short answer is, the reason that Showtime didn't do for Boots then what Eddie's doing for him now is because they didn't have the money to do it. They had to focus on what money makers they already had. Waning viewership leads to a waning annual budget and an inability to create new avenues of opportunity, develop new stars, new fighters. Their methodology of promoting Jaron Ennis was to attach his name to a Terence Crawford fight in the absence of an actual fight that in terms of promotion, that's all they really did. They attached his name to Crawford's name. That was their bright idea to promote Boots. Simply attaching his name to Crawford's name doesn't make Jaron Ennis a big ticket seller. No. It doesn't really help him no. amass that grassroots following, that grassroots demand for him and his fights. It's basically just clout chasing, or it was. We're over that now. But that's how they promoted him. Since they lacked the finances and creativity to try and promote the fighter some other way, that was all they could come up with. Whereas Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, they have the means and they have the money to invest in Jaron Ennis in a way that Showtime and the PBC could not. They're getting him a hometown fight. Matchroom was recently named the most valuable promotional company worth the most money in all of boxing. And as they say, it takes money to make money. They have the money to invest in boots that the PBC didn't, that Showtime didn't. Word is traveling fast. fast. As former Mayweather Promotions fighter, who has now left Mayweather Promotions, Jaleel Hackett. 20 years old, sporting a professional record of eight wins with no losses, no draws, seven knockouts. You know what Jaleel says? What? He says Matchroom Boxing is the number one promotional company he would like to join now that he is a free agent. People talk. And word travels fast. Before Jaleel Hackett left Mayweather Promotions, Richardson Hitchens left Mayweather Promotions, paired up with Matchroom, and he's been singing their praises ever since. Jaleel Hackett would like to be the next Mayweather Promotions fighter that goes over to Matchroom. And I say sign him. Yes. I say fortify that stable. Give him a slot on the undercards. See what he can do. And if you like what you see, sign him to a multi-fight deal. He competes somewhere in between 147 and 154. Matchroom could use one or two bodies at those weights. So you're telling me another Mayweather Promotions fighter jumped ship and now they want to go to Matchroom. Well, I thought Matchroom didn't know what they were doing in America, according to Leonard Ellerby. Well, I told you, Leonard's just the poser. He's just the guy who was riding Floyd Mayweather's coattails in Floyd's heyday, 
parlate that into a position as Mayweather Promotions' point man, but what is the state of Mayweather Promotions? When they ranked all the promotional outfits in a sport of boxing, Mayweather Promotions wasn't there. No, but the PBC was. Yeah, the PBC was there. And Mayweather Promotions is just a subsidiary of the PBC. They're not big enough to stand alone. Just one of several smaller promotional outfits, not dissimilar from Chino Maidana Promotions and Manny Pacquiao Promotions, Samson Lukowicz, in his stable. What? That's right. The whole time Leonard Ellerby's been doing interviews and saying this and that about Matchroom, saying this and that about the zone, he was little more than just an employee. This was always the situation. And what is the state of Mayweather Promotions now? What is it? Your fighters are leaving. They want to go to Matchroom. Is that because of the great job you're doing over there at Mayweather Promotions? Why would that be the situation if you know what you're doing and Eddie Hearn doesn't? Eddie Hearn, who is on course to promote Jaron Ennis's next fight, his first fight under the Matchroom banner. And as stated, if the question is, why is Matchroom able to do this for Jaron Ennis, and why wasn't the PBC? It's because it takes money to make money. You have to invest. And to make that investment, you have to have the money. Oh. To have the money, you have to have a successful business. Oh. Not an insolvent one, like the PBC. Matchroom has the money to give Jaron Ennis a homecoming fight, give Subriel Matias a homecoming fight, Katie Taylor a homecoming fight. See the pattern? They know what they're doing. And I think a lot of Americans are late to the party because that's not new news. You just haven't been listening. So where are you getting your news from? Finally in men's heavyweight news, former WBC champion Deontay Wilder has welcomed the chance of finally getting Anthony Joshua at Wembley on September 20th or the 21st. Fuck yeah! Turns me on! Gets my fucking dick hard! You're behind enemy lines and you get a great adrenaline rush. I have no problem coming to London. It has been a long time coming for that fight with AJ. I want it. I've never ran from a fight. When I've done what I'm supposed to do versus Zile Zhang, let's get this fight on. And I don't want to dwell in the past anymore. Whatever did or didn't happen and who said what, because the point is, the opportunity for Deontay is still there. Yeah. After all this time yeah. and all these losses, these ups, yeah. these downs. He can still salvage it. He just has to make it past Zile Zhang. He has to show the boxing world that he's still got it and he is better than what he showed late last year with Joseph Parker, where he was outfought, outgunned, and couldn't pull the trigger, couldn't find his right hand, the right opportunity to throw it, as Joseph Parker, a shorter, stumpier fighter, with a lower center of gravity and a more prolific puncher within a round than Deontay. By being so aggressive and coming forward, he flustered Wilder how Tyson Fury flustered Wilder. Though because Joseph Parker is smaller than Tyson Fury, Wilder didn't have as big a target, and because he was out for so long, his reflexes... Don't make excuses for him. I'm not, because being out that amount of time, a little over a year is no excuse for Wilder. He had every opportunity to get back out there. Sooner. Joseph Parker did. He fought something like four times in 12 months. Anthony Joshua did. Same thing. If Wilder didn't, he has no one to blame but himself because he could have got back out there sooner. It's my opinion. He had every intention of sitting out all of last year, but because they offered him so much money to come fight in Saudi, he took it. It was really just the money that drew him out, though he wasn't motivated. Is he motivated now? I noticed on Deontay Wilder's Instagram, he uploaded a video of himself doing road work. He was actually running, which was surprising because in previous years, it was said that Deontay doesn't do road work. He doesn't jog, he doesn't run, he doesn't skip rope. That's why his cardio is so poor for a heavyweight that is so thin. Deontay Wilder only looks athletic, and looking athletic isn't better than actually being athletic. He only looks the part, but he hasn't had the engine, the cardio. If you've been watching Wilder's fights over the years, he's not a busy puncher within a round. He spends most of a round trying to land a single shot, a single punch. He's not a combination puncher, or at least he hasn't been. He doesn't have the engine. To be busier in a round, he hasn't had it. That if you forced Deontay Wilder to work and you forced him to fight, like Tyson Fury forced him to fight, he'd get tired that much faster. So now he's running. He's doing road work, likely to correct that issue, to have the engine that he hasn't had all the while 
Zilei Chang seems to be employing a similar strategy to what Tyson Fury's strategy was. Ahead of Tyson Fury's second fight with Wilder, Fury made the decision that he's going to come in heavier, he's going to come in bigger, and it seems that Zilei Zhang is doing the same thing. He recently posted some images of himself on the scales, close to 300 pounds? Wow. You may be asking yourself, does that help Zilei Zhang, or does that hurt him? It didn't hurt Tyson Fury. It helped him. It might help Zhang. The way it might help Zhang is, let's be honest, this is a guy in his late 30s. If he were to try to slim down now, it might only weaken him. You think? It might. Because he's never going to be a guy who goes in there gliding around on ice skates, trying to be more nimble and more mobile, more thin and streamlined. He's never going to be that guy, least of all at this age. So he's doubling down Don't. on what he already has. What? And what does he have? What? He has size. He's got a lot more size than Deontay Wilder. And he has power. He's got power. We know he's got power. You see what he did to Joseph Parker's face. Knocked him down two times. See what he did to Joe Joyce in their two fights, especially the last one. Chang is doubling down on what he already has. And he has size and power. He may be doing this so that he can bully Deontay Wilder the same way that Fury bullied Deontay Wilder. The caveat is that Zilei Zhang already isn't all that busy within a round. He doesn't throw that many punches. You could argue that... He let Felipe Pergovic off the hook when he hurt him. He let Joseph Parker off the hook when he hurt him because he doesn't throw enough punches. So if you get bigger, won't that make you slower and result in less punches, even less of a work rate? That's the caveat, the problem area. We'll see if Zile Zhang can make it all come together because before it becomes about Wilder versus Joshua, Wilder's got to get past Zhang. There's no guarantee that he does. This may be a bigger target. Bigger than Joseph Parker, not as active within a round, but he punches harder. A lot harder. On the other side of this Zhang fight is the biggest fight of Wilder's career. Even bigger than the Fury fights. And the irony is there are no belts on the line.